Uh, there's a bit of pause in my video there. I had to take a phone call from um, the person I'm doing a job for. Uh, I don't know how to edit videos, so this has to be two videos. So, I was now, um, by the time I got offloaded at this uh, sort of site, I had to wait for about 15 minutes before they would offload me. By the time I got off site and was sort of all finished, it was five past 12. So now I was looking for a second job, and uh, it was really quite busy uh, in that area, in Lempton, around Lempton's Park. And uh, within five minutes I got a call, so 10 past 12, I had a phone call for a bid. It was a bid going from Hinkley to Stoke. And I thought at the time, I've not really been to Stoke very much, I thought Stoke was pretty close to Manchester, I should have to get a good job back from the northwest to uh, towards home. That's my thinking anyway. <laughs> Um, so it was a short wheelbase fan job, it was 80 loaded miles, I bid £80, I was 23 dead miles away, 40 minutes to drive to Hinkley. And I'd been to this pickup point a couple of times in the last week or so, so I don't know whether they're doing a lot more deliveries now, but I knew exactly where to go to, I knew the routine, and I knew what to ask for. So I got to the point, the door very quickly, and I asked for the the part or the, the, the goods. It was going to be all of those small, smallish van job work. It could have been long stuff, but it might not just be a, might just be a box. And so uh, when I first arrived at the warehouse, a uh, guy came to me and asked me what I wanted, and he, he then went off and went, went to went to help me. And then I didn't hear didn't see him again. I was waiting there for about ten minutes. Um, a forklift driver came by and said, can I help you? And I said, I think I'm being helped, but I'm not convinced the guy knows what he's doing. Um, she said, we'll wait for it longer. If he's, if he's not back, I'll help you. So I went for another five minutes. And then a different guy came up to me, and he knew what I was there for, so obviously some messages got through. But he said, this has got to be picked now. So I said, I'm happy to wait my van. So I waited in my van, and then um, I rang the shipper at, so I'd, I'd um, arrived there at 10 to Bond, 12.50. At 5 past 1, I rang the shipper and just said, um, they're not quite ready yet, I'm waiting, I'm hoping to be ready in the next few minutes, but I'll let you know if it's longer. Then I rang back at 20 past 1, I said it's now been half an hour of waiting. I don't know how it's going to be, but can we please agree that this time on was just going to be waiting time? And that was fine. And then at half past one, I got off site. So basically it was 40 minutes waiting. So I called back to the shipper, and, and I wasn't really in a fair mind to start um, dictating what I wanted. I didn't really care what, what, what I was going to get money-wise. I just wanted something. And uh, I explained the situation, and the guy said, I'll give you 10 after waiting. I thought it was very fair, especially the 10 minutes uh, beyond the free time. And um, yeah, so I got an extra tenner for that job, which was really helpful in the end. It was worth it. And I'm, I'm going to be mindful here. Um, the extra five or tenner for waiting, it is, or, or anything like handballing or anything like that, or you know, bidding a bit more on a job, it does make a bit of a difference. Uh, it does make a difference at the end of the day. Um, yesterday, so the day on, on the previous video, Friday, I got £15 for handballing and waiting, and that meant that I pretty, pretty much got closer to my target for the week. So it was only a little amount, but it was worth, it's worth it. So, that was agreed, <coughs> um, and and then the next, I, I was now in Stoke, and, but I wasn't quite in Stoke Centre, I was sort of, um, I was halfway between Stoke and Leek, and I don't know the area very well, but when I looked at jobs, there were, there was, a, there was quite a few jobs coming up, but there was like Stockport, Manchester, M17, uh, Telford, um, there was Derby, um, and it was all like an hour away from where I was, and I, I, I was really in the middle of, I, in the end, in the middle of nowhere when it came to jobs. The closest place was Stoke or Leek, but there wasn't much coming out of Stoke, and obviously Leek is very small as a town. So I 
had to, I gave it half an hour and then I thought I've got to do something here. So I started to drive, um, I thought, well, I was trying to think about which way to drive uh, and I, I thought, I was really stuck because Manchester was like an hour away and it's going in the wrong direction from my home. Whereas Derby is probably the right direction but it's, going, but it, it's probably less, like, less chance to get a job going towards my home. So, in the end, the decision was made for me. A job came up from ST10, which I now know is Cheadle. And ST10 was about 20 minutes from where I was, 10 miles. And I got a job going to Gloucester. Um, got it for a small van job. The number of miles um, was about 75 ish, I think. Loaded miles? No, it was more, more than that. Uh, must have been about 100. Yeah, it was 100 miles from uh, from there. I put 8 p.m. on, 8 p.m. on, which was 80 pounds. And I got that job. And I arrived at 10 past four at the pickup point. So. From half past one to ten past four, so quite a lot of waiting time around the area. And um, I was just taking. I don't think what I was taking now. Oh yeah, it was one um, repaired machine part. It was quite heavy, but it was just sort of handballed on by the the manufacturing firm. And uh, Gloucester was about two hours away from where I was, uh, mainly because I think of the, the traffic on the motorway is the M6 and the M5 a bit congested. Um, I got caught up at the M6 going up to Stoke, and I got caught going down back to towards Birmingham. So I uh, got myself to, to Gloucester. And the reason why I went to Gloucester from there is, I went, for a start, it was a really close job from where I was. But Gloucester, I thought, it was not a bad place to be in because there can be jobs going back to Birmingham or back northwards or back to, you know, somewhere from there. I thought I might have a chance of getting a job. Although when I realised it was two hours away, I thought it was very unlikely. So I did that job and I got to Gloucester and was offloaded. Um, it was a residential address. I rang the guy like a couple of minutes before I arrived. He put it out, out of my van into his van, and then he was happy. So 8:40, no, sorry, 6:40, I was finished with that job, and then I had a decision to make: do I go home or do I go to my mum's? My mum's was 45 minutes away. My home was two and a half hours away, and. I looked at both, I looked about going to home via my mum's, because it was basically on the way. And uh, I thought I could do both. But I just really didn't feel I could swallow 150 dead miles. So it was time that I went to see my mum. So in the end, that was decision making, the number of dead miles and the time. And I thought I'd pop and see my mum. So that's what I did. Uh, I went to get some food first from Sainsbury's. In, um, in in Cheltenham, and then got some fuel. That's where I got the fuel for for this uh, week. And then I went to Mum's house. And so I finished work and got there at half past seven, and that saved me a good hundred miles of dead miles last night. Now the obviously the issue there was I couldn't then book a job for the morning from my home area, which is what I often like to do. And so I was then left with looking for jobs in the morning from an area I don't know very well. But we'll come to that later on. Right, I think I think that's all. Um, there's, there's something in the back of my mind that I thought I was going to talk to you about. Uh, oh yeah, that was this. I'll it now. So I was talking to somebody who I know well about his career. And um, we have sort of, this isn't really my thought, it's his thoughts, but um, it's worth sharing. I think it makes a lot of sense, uh, particularly if you're not experienced in this job. And um, what we were saying was that 
if you're in a, a quietish niche area, like I am, in East Anglia, for, this is for courier work, so I'm not in a built up area, I live in a sort of quieter area, um, but what that means is, I find, I tend to, because I know the area that I'm living in, and you know, how far to get, how, how quick this gets places, and what sort of work there is, and how, what, what's the competition, what the competition is like, it is easier, I think, than most, for me to win a job in the morning that's paying a decent amount of money. Because there's less drivers going for whatever jobs there are. And if I can do that earlier than the day before, I can get, and I sort of do that consistently, I can generally get a job in booked in the following morning that's worth doing. And I think that if you're in a built-up area like Manchester, Birmingham, Leeds, I keep saying Leeds, but yeah, well, I would say Leeds, you know, those sort of areas, I think, I'm guessing, it's quite hard to get, off a CX at least, a decent paying job in the morning because of the competition with other drivers. But I think the converse is true when you're going home. It, I find it really difficult to find any job taking me anywhere near my home. The closest I can get to really is getting to Derby or Nottingham. And that isn't that close, it's about an hour and a half from my house. I mean, yeah, I've never really got a job to Peter yet, which would be ideal, even though, even though I'm still sort of 40 minutes from, from there. So me getting up home is very difficult, but I bet it's a lot easier to get a job home to somewhere like Manchester or Birmingham or Leeds or London. So there's plenty of jobs going to those places from the rest of the country. So when people say where's a good place to work, I find that to really um, hard question to answer. I think it's impossible to answer. I think you can make a living doing this anywhere in the country. It just depends on other factors. Are you prepared to stay out one or two nights a week or more? Are you prepared to drive, say, an hour to get your first job in the morning if, you, if you're struggling? Um, or, you know, or, or have a long, maybe even, yeah, up, up to an hour? Are you prepared to do it hours that are a bit more like social, so get up earlier? Or are you prepared to work later? Are you prepared to go to places that no one else wants to go to? So, yeah, do the Scotland trip, but do it for the right price, or do the Cornwall trip, uh, but you obviously get the right price getting down there. Um, and, and I'm basing this on people who don't have their own customers and don't have contacts. So, I think that, it, that you can find a way of being a, a self-employed, same-day courier, anywhere in the country, but it, you have to be flexible in some places, in other places it's really easy. There are places in the country where you don't have to work that hard to find a job and or get contacts um, compared to other places. I'm not saying that people don't work hard because clearly everyone does who's successful, but um, that one of the one of the factors that affects the, the availability of jobs for you off the CX or your own customers is where you are based and where you can go to. And it might be that you have, like I have, I've got, um, you know, a, parents who live in, in, near Birmingham. So I can effectively use it as a second base, which I've done today. So if you've got, if you've got, maybe you don't live, maybe you don't, maybe you don't, don't live in a great area, but maybe your parents or your brother or sister or your children live somewhere in a great area, they've got a spare room. So, you know, there's lots of different ways in which you can make this work, no matter where you live in the country. Um, I think that um, sort of perseverance, hard work, you know, being professional, they're the things that make you successful, not necessarily what kind of van you have or where you are based in the country. Right, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that you are being successful at the moment, however you choose to find that term for yourselves. And I shall speak to you later, probably today, for today's video. Farewell, friends.